Good morning and happy Saturday. Welcome to your early morning intuitive guidance. I'm Dr. Bonnie Nussbaum here with some words of wisdom to start your day. And I think these words of wisdom are actually going to be very helpful for the next weeks and months as we approach this election. So this is going to give you some grist for your mill in terms of how to deal with these dicey times in which we find ourselves. So Let's start, as always, with the breath, as I'm waiting for some of you to pop on this morning. Nice deep breath in through the nose. Out through the mouth. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. And I'm feeling called to send some energy. Let's rub our hands together here. We're just kind of aim them outward. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Sending energy out into our world. Healing, joyful, pleasant energy. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. I want you to think about the people you really love. Send energy to them. The people you know who are struggling with stuff right now. Sending them energy. Rub them up good again. The people who are being hateful, send them good, loving, kind energy vibes. And I love that that's right when Cindy pops on. Welcome, welcome. You're the first person here. We are sending energy out to the world. So rub your hands together. Send some good energy out to those who agree with us, to those who disagree with us to all manner of folks, to the people who are nice and polite about their anger, to the people who are gnarly and not fun with their anger, send and heal and energy out to everybody. Good morning, Ruth Ann. Welcome. Glad you are here. Send and good juju to all the peeps out there who need a little bit of energy right now. Getting this swirling around. Way back when, many, many years ago, I watched a uh, stage hypnotist, which is different than someone who uses, good morning, Mel, who uses hypnosis for healing. Um, a stage hypnotist, sometimes I'm not so keen on what they do because they're kind of making people the butt of jokes, but um, this particular hypnotist had a guy up on stage where he walked him through this process of disconnecting his butt. And so this guy's walking around as if he has no butt. And then at some point he attaches, reattaches the guy's butt at, I forget what it was, 35 miles an hour or whatever. And it was a pretty dramatic kind of thing. But that's kind of what I see with some of the energy we're going to be sending here today. Good morning, Beth. Can you imagine you're walking along and all of a sudden all this good juju comes riding on in? This is good stuff. Is good stuff. So we have a fabulous chapter today from the Divine Tosha Silver, Outrageous Openness, Letting the Divine Take the Lead. And the story in here, I think, is so relevant for all of us as we're wading through the muck and mire of where we're at, especially in America, right here, right now, especially with an election approaching, etc., especially with the divisiveness that's going on. I think this um, particular chapter is going to be very helpful with that. And it came on the heels of late last night. I get, good morning, Janine. Welcome, welcome. I get a message. Good morning, Gwen. A, a cartoon sent to me by someone I went to college with. And he and I had lunch a while ago. Um, his oldest daughter just got married and um, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, that was earlier, maybe spring. So all of a sudden I get this, this hate filled cartoon. And I'm like, what the heck is this? And I didn't respond because I am wise enough at this point in my life to go, let's just sit on this for a while and see what happens. Next thing I know comes through a picture of his brand new grandbaby. And I'm like, well, that's an interesting juxtaposition. Um, and my first thought on the cartoon was, you're watching way too much Fox News. Um, and and I actually 
prescribed that for one of my clients at a, this is years ago who was having heart palpitations and a ton of fear and whatever my prescription to him was one week without fox news and then let's see where you're at the heart palpitations had stopped the fear-based hiding in the house stuff had stopped etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah so our chapter for today, for those of you who like to read along, we are on chapter 16, which is page 195. It's entitled, Be What the World Needs. And the subtitle is, Hate Therapy. Hate Therapy. Interesting, huh? Peaks a little bit of curiosity there, I would hope. Oh, and we've got eight of us on here right now. So I'm thinking, how cool is this, that eight of us are going to pick up what she's putting down here and then go out into the world and hopefully talk about it. How cool would that be? So let's see. Be what the world needs, hate therapy. The quote is by Thich Nhat Hanh, brilliant man, um, passed away, what, about a year ago, I think? Anyway, he says, the problem was not our torturers, but that we began to hate them. Then we would be lost. Blink, blink. So here's the story she shares to make the point. I was sitting in a Tribeca cafeteria or cafe when a man, a guy, a guy walked in the door, caught my eye and strode over. You know, when you get that person barreling at you and you know something not fun's going to happen, but you don't know what yet. Well, 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 Gloria, he began his voice shaking with anger. Look what the cat dragged in. I knew you'd eventually get thrown my way. And what the hell did you think would happen when I got that notice from your nut job asshat lawyer? Did you think that low ball, that low rent slime ball could scare me into more dough? He went on for a few more loud obscenity laced minutes while the writer in me sat riveted, musing, God, I miss New York. <laughs> Soon the nearby tables were listening and watching as I silently took off my sunglasses to reveal that no, actually I wasn't this guy's long detested ex-wife. Just a really, really close proxy. He was so rattled, he backed out the door as if he had seen a ghost. Christ, you even dress like her, he mumbled as he left, staring at the floor. Even the damn Mephisto sandals. Hey, lady, sorry, really sorry. This guy was such a great lesson. Good morning, Carolyn. Glad you're here. He had been almost entertaining since his rant had nothing to do with me. Nothing personal. But isn't a lot of anger that way? Okay, hear this loud and clear. Isn't a lot of anger that way? When we blow up at somebody, how often is it not really about them or not really about what just happened with them? Road rage is a perfect example. When someone unloads their road rage on you, how often is it really about you? Or how often is it really about you commensurate with whatever you did, not letting them in, unfortunately, accidentally, whatever, whatever, making a mistake, it happens, right? But their overreaction to it lets you know there's more going on here than just what transpired right now, right? But isn't a lot of anger that way? Someone might really be screaming without knowing it about the time they were left in the shopping cart at Safeway when they were three. I once felt venom at first sight from another guy in a spiritual group where I belonged. Somehow, the minute we met, it kicked in for him. Good morning, Tammy. Welcome, welcome. One night, I longed to pray for the poor guy, figuring he could use some help. He didn't exactly seem like the happiest person. Anyway, I had nothing to lose. I lit a green candle and sent him love and joy almost nightly. About a month later, he lumbered up. He half growled, hey, I got to tell you, you used to bug the crap out of me. And now I'm mad because I'm not mad. I don't know what the heck you're doing, but I don't hate you. And he walked away. We never spoke again, but that was enough. Sometimes the people with the most anger need the most help. You never know what sending them blessings may do. 
You might be the only one on the planet winging good their way. You never know. So, what happens when someone goes ugly on you? What happens? Usually we want to fight back. Oh yeah, well you're a jerk too, or we flip them off, or whatever. And I actually had someone tell me a story yesterday where someone said something very hurtful to her, and she flipped them off. And then she burst into tears because she had never flipped anybody off in her entire life. I think she's very unusual in that way. (laughs) But she was very upset that she had flipped this person off. So the, the other party hugged her and said, you don't really mean that. And she said, no, I don't really mean that. But it hurt her feelings that this person said what they said. Can we address that more directly? Can we address that more directly? That was hurtful. Why did you say it that way? When we can speak more of our truth that way, so much stuff is going to change. So much stuff is going to change. When we can not respond with anger and hostility back to someone else's anger and hostility. So like with this cartoon that this friend sent me, I might send back to him, can you tell me, can you explain to me the cartoon? What does that mean to you? Um, why did you choose to send it to me? Help me understand here. We'll see what I get. We'll see what I get. I don't want to just not respond. Sometimes not responding is a great thing, but I kind of want to feel out where are you coming from with this thing? What is this about? Is this about you having soaked up a bunch of Fox News misinformation and now you're spewing it my direction? What is this about? Help me understand. And I don't feel the least compunction to try to get him to see my point of view. I just don't. But I would like to understand where he's coming from. We'll see what happens. But when someone responds with anger, hostility, whatever, what if we were able to take the step back, not react, but go, wow, this really doesn't have anything to do with me. I can just tell in my gut it doesn't. But it's getting flung my direction. Oftentimes right now dealing with my dad because he's gone through this series of falls and he's feeling pretty fragile and um, he's scared. Sometimes he's being not very pleasant. And rather than firing back at him, I think coming at it from a different approach would be better. Sounds like you're really angry about this. Let's see what happens. We'll see what happens. But sometimes you you need the the pause to be able to go, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want to just lash out because that's not what this is about. It's not really about me. I'm just handy. I'm just handy. Doesn't mean I have to take a dump job. That's not what I'm saying here. But if we can modify how we respond to it, like even going, whoa, that's interesting. Tell me where you're at with this. And they might burst into tears. They might go into a rant like this guy did. Whatever it is. But once <laughs> once he realized he was chewing out the wrong person, it wasn't his ex-wife, kind of gave him pause. Kind of gave him pause. So, and sometimes it's just about misunderstanding. So it could be saying, tell me what you heard me say. Because I'm not thinking you heard what I said. I'm thinking you heard something different. Tell me what you heard me say. Well, you said that. uh, What I was saying was, let me try that again. Because clearly the message didn't come through the way I intended. Let me try it again. If we can stay in that place, magic is going to happen. Magic is going to happen. Again, are they going to come around to our way of thinking? Not necessarily. But when you refuse to do this, things change. You can't have a fight with one person. You can't have a fight with one person. So when we can manage our own reactivity and respond instead of react, things go a whole lot better. Now, what does that mean on our part? That means we need to be taking impeccably good care of ourselves. We need to be well rested. We need to be well hydrated. We need to be well loved, even if it's just us loving us. 
because then we're going to be capable of responding in ways that are healthy instead of getting wound up in the negativity and the vitriol and all this other crap. We don't need sides here. Sides are not helpful. I was um, watching this amazing um, video by Richard Rohr, who, if you don't know him, he's a Franciscan priest who just is very profound and very wise. But he was talking about competition and sporting events and people being on opposite sides of something and how intense they get about that. And be looking at that from his stepped back, curious observer perspective. Isn't this interesting? People get this wound up about something that's allegedly a game. <laughs> So it was a very interesting conversation. And it, one of the things that, that um, I think we can use a visual on that's helpful is if this is the game, quote unquote, four letter word, game, um, and people are in opposing positions, if there's a conflict between you and someone else and you're in opposing positions, how do you move yourself around beside them? A line beside them. That doesn't mean you're going to give in, allow yourself to be abused, um, buy into whatever it is they're putting out there. No, 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 no. I'll give you another example. Someone come, came to my front desk, slammed her hands on the desk, and was just irate. And my administrative assistant said, well, let's see what we can do to help you out here. She instantly calmed down, took her hands off it, took a little bit of a step back, and she then was willing to wait and work with my administrative assistant instead of being this rage-filled maniac. So what can we do to come around beside somebody instead of doing battle with them? And if their reality is a reality that you don't buy into, how likely are you to be successful if you push against their reality? Ain't going to work, folks. Ain't going to work. But there's other ways to work with that that can be, I hear what you're saying. Yep. I, I see how you can can believe that. Yep. I, I, you know, and you're not going, but wait a minute. What about this? What about that? What about... It's not your job to change the opinions of the world. It is not your job. And <clears throat> you can get a sense of whether or not this person is even willing at all to hear you. By asking or by saying, okay, so I hear what you're saying. What I'm hearing you say is X, Y, and Z. Am I accurate? Yep, you got it. That's what I'm saying. Would you like to hear my thoughts on it? Don't be surprised if you hear no. <laughs> because oftentimes they're entrenched in their position. And there are a lot of people right now. Good morning, Chrissy. Glad you are here. There are a lot of people who are in that place of there's a right and a wrong and there's I'm right, <clears throat> so therefore you must be wrong. And if you're trying to convince me of something else, then you're trying to make me wrong. It's this boxed in narrow narrative that doesn't allow for growth. Doesn't allow for growth. And if you've made your fledgling attempts, okay, so I, I've heard what you had to say. Would you like to hear what I have to say? And you get the no, let it go. Save your breath. And my grandmother would say, save your breath to cool your soup because you're not going to get anywhere. If they say, well, yeah, I'll hear you. And, and you put forth a few pieces of your thought process. And you can say, this is just my thought process. This is where I am, I'm at. This is what I believe and you get a bunch of derogatory stuff back, or you get an escalation of them trying to enforce their belief system, let it go. Let it go. You are not going to make headway in that circumstance. There's a lovely group out there called Braver Angels, which is made up of a mix of red and blue folks, and they talk together through all kinds of stuff. And it's just a really cool model for how do you bring people of allegedly differing opinions to the table and have a decent discussion. And 
oftentimes what you find is underneath it all, maybe not at the extremes of positions, but underneath it all, most people really do want the same kind of outcome. How they're going to get there is likely different. And maybe that's not a terrible thing. We need variety in our world. How do we get more tolerant of variety? And again, anything that wants to shut down variety, communication, diversity, etc. Probably not a good thing. Probably not the greatest thing. So there's our card for today. I love our, our chapter for today. I love that whole idea of being the observer when someone starts going off on you about something that has nothing to do with you. Being that observer. Isn't this interesting? And, there, you know, if it's really escalating, it might be, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Am I the person you're really mad at? Good morning, Robin. Glad you're here. Am I the person you're really mad at? Or is there other stuff going on here? That might be enough to give them pause. It might not be. If it's not and they keep ranting, you have the right to leave. Just leave. Okay? So, lots to think about on this one. It's about hatred and anger and how we're not going to foster that. We're not going to feed into that by responding with the same. We're going to hopefully mitigate it by responding appropriately. So it's going to take practice. I know it's going to take practice because sometimes things catch you off guard and they poke your buttons and you flare up. You then have the opportunity to step back. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want to be reactive. I want to be responsible. Give me a minute to think this through how I want to say what I need to say to you. Say it out loud. Say it out loud. Have an awesome Saturday. Good. I'm glad it was helpful. Have an awesome Saturday. We'll see you again tomorrow. Remember, you are capable of far more than you think you are, including being responsive, not reactive. Bye-bye.